Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. It is Friday, and as of 8 o'clock last night, all forecasts, all stations, all channels called for rain today. And it appears to have rained overnight, and now it's done. So now, on February, what is it, the 24th, it is 67 degrees and sunny. So considering the weather, I will not be riding indoors today, and Trainer Road's going to have to wait another day for my debut. I know. I know, Trainer Road. You're disappointed. I'm riding my bike outside, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, Trainer Road isn't getting its debut, but this camera is, so we'll see how this footage works out. So a couple minutes back there, I had an episode of what I'm pretty sure was an SVT. If you don't know what that is, it's supraventricular tachycardia. Now, as far as the Garmin was concerned, my heart rate was at 180 to 190, even when I was standing still. So a precipitated mine, I'm pretty sure, was climbing up just a very short 40 second, steep little hill, punchy thing. I got out of the saddle and I crested this little hill and I kind of picked my head up and there's a really strong headwind coming this way. And it kind of caught me in the back of my throat and it felt like it just took my breath away for a second. And immediately after that, I kind of felt this, you know, pounding in my chest. So I, I coasted to a stop and I stopped. And usually when you have one of these, like if you stand up real fast, what kind of helps is either to kind of bring your arms up over your head or carotid massage usually helps. So I just kind of employed those techniques and, and tried to calm everything down. So this instance was a little bit different. Once it got to about 90 seconds, I called my roommate. I started to get a little bit nervous because A, I've never had one of these on the bike before, and B, it's never lasted that long. All right, I'm home. Uh, did about an hour and 10 minutes on the bike. Took it real slow. So I wanted to kind of clarify the uh, SVT. You may not have heard the term supraventricular tachycardia or SVT before, but in all likelihood, you've probably had one. It's that thing that kind of happens if you kind of bend over and you're moving things around and you stand up real fast, and all of a sudden your heart starts doing one of these, and it usually lasts like 15, 20 seconds, and then it just calms right back down. It's probably something that you refer to as a palpitation. They're very benign most of the time if you're not having them often or if there's not a structural abnormality. It, it happens to people. It's just kind of one of those things that the heart does. It's not a computer. It's not perfect. So this is kind of what happened to me out on the road. But it was long. So after I called my roommate and everything had kind of calmed down, we discussed her possibly coming to pick me up. But what was I going to do? I probably wasn't going to go to the doctor for something that, that was this common, and afterwards I felt fine. So to spend you know, a $25 copay, an hour in a waiting room, and then a two-minute EKG that was going to tell me I was just fine, I'd rather just kind of do a controlled experiment on my own. So what I discussed with her was that I was going to ride a particular route. It's a route that I've ridden no less than probably 600 times. I'm very familiar with it. She's very familiar with it. I've got live tracking on my Garmin so that she can see where I am in case I'm not responsive or I don't get in contact with her or I'm later than I think I'm going to be or said that I'm going to be. And I figured what I was going to do is I was just going to kind of do a really slow and controlled ride and do controlled intervals in certain areas like climb control it at a particular power so I could very closely monitor my heart rate for any kind of abnormality there and everything was expected for the entire ride you know I, I every time I kind of went up a hill at a certain power my heart would rise 
as I would expect it to, not too fast, not too slow, and then I would recover at a normal rate. So everything felt and acted normal with respect to my heart. You know, it, I was in an area where there was kind of a lot of houses. There was enough cars coming by that if something really happened, you know, somebody could, could come to my aid. I've got actually a uh, SOS function on my smartwatch, which is tap enabled, and you do a certain tap sequence and it actually contacts my parents and it'll contact my roommate and give GPS coordinates as to where I am and tell them that basically I need help. Um, so, it, you know, it was just kind of something I did. I'm not a doctor by any stretch of the imagination. I am not saying that it was, it's a smart idea to necessarily ignore, um, you know, a heart issue or some kind of heart symptoms, especially if you've never dealt with them before. But I did not have any chest pain. I did not have any shortness of breath. The feeling was not foreign to me. I felt it. The only worry for me was that it lasted a little bit longer. And perhaps that was due to the fact that my heart rate was a little bit higher to begin with just from working on the bike. I have never had one on the bike before and I'm hoping to never have one again. But this is something that's also common in athletes. I have a, a friend of mine that I know that, you know, he rides and he's had them during races before and he's got to like jam his thumb into his carotid artery and give himself carotid massage sometimes to slow it down from like 220 beats per minute, uh, you know, on the readout. And, you know, he, he deals with it. He knows what it is. He actually has a structural ab abnormality that they can do a, an ablation on, which is basically you freeze that um, non-working part of the heart uh, so that it, it's basically immobilized and it's unable to interfere with the rest of your heart. But it's something that happens. It's something that you have maybe dealt with if, if you're an athlete, if you're a runner, a cyclist, whatever. Uh, it may have been something you felt before. Maybe you have a way of dealing with it. But that was my excitement or my scare for the day. So when I wanted to go out and kind of rip my own legs off on the ride, it ended up just being a very slow, controlled ride, which I could have done at home on the trainer, but the weather was beautiful. I was kind of enjoying the muddy scenery, but I was enjoying being outside, the warmer air, the sun was out. So that was, that was my uh, adventure for the day. gonna start getting ready for work but first I got home and of course it wouldn't be a complete day without a little mail time all right I think most of this if not all of it's gonna be my subscribe and stay save stuff we'll take a look to see if there's any other nuggets of excitement all right, so here's the Bottle Bright stuff that I bought the other day. Got here really fast. Um, I'm probably going to use all of these. Um, I've got some, like, the blender shaker bottles, and then I've got some of my uh, just bike bottles where just from frequent use or not necessarily throwing them in the wash right away and leaving them on your bike overnight, they get a little funky. So I'm going to try to use those. I might just kind of take a, maybe Saturday or Sunday and throw one and let them all soak at once and uh, see how they work. But I feel, I mean, my, my bottles aren't completely grody. I think it's just getting to the point where, like, I notice like a plasticky taste to uh, the, the one bottle. So I'm gonna just kind of treat them all and, and see what happens. Spoiled cats. More spoiled cats. My cats eat better than I do half the time. Bike batteries. bunch of paper and these are probably some kind of cleaning supply or something that I order that I forget about. Yes! Sledge wipes! All right, I gotta stop dicking around and go to work. I've been getting a little lazy, waiting you to come save me. I can see the jar laying by the way that you dream me. We really need this reprieve from the weather. It's gonna do a lot for the moods of people around. It's been so gray and so gross out for so long. We deserve it. Incredible. It's midnight and it's 70 degrees here. Nice. Well, thus ends Friday, the end of the work week, which remarkably was very good. 
it was a day where all the pieces just came together and it was a day free of bullshit and I'm just happy. I'm happy to end on a high note, but I'm also happy that it's over. Hopefully the next couple days will bring lots of bike riding and happiness. Alright guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. So we can't go, we can't